Washington, which is right outside Portland, Oregon. Uh, he has a company called Veritas Custom Guitars, and uh, he's amazing. You should go to his website and check out his stuff. It's super rad. This one's made uh, fully out of rosewood. Um, so it's got really cool tone. It's like super mellow. Um, I love humbuckers. So these are Lindy Fraylin humbuckers, which are totally killer <clears throat> for tone. Um, the other guitar I play is that Telly. It's a Squire. And, uh, but I, I basically like replaced all the electronics in it and put the same thing, put Lindy Freelands in that. Uh, they're super rad pickups, but... Yeah, yeah. I'm back, Slash. I didn't mean to send that text to you. I know, I saw that. <laughs> it's cool, man. I received it anyway. Cool. Why are you sitting over there, bro? I don't know, because I don't want to sit. Where are you going to sit? I, I don't know. My pedals are here. Well, I, I, I could stand, too. We can, like, walk around the room. I don't want to stand. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's like a so the name of the company is Veritas, and that's kind of like his little custom coin. You guys yeah, can everybody check, that. check that guitar out. Yeah. Veritas. And the cool thing about Casey and Veritas is he's like, um, he's coming out with like a line of guitars that you can pick from, but he's also like super customizable. Like basically you can request you know, anything that you really want, and he'll pretty much do it for you as long as you pay him what you know he needs for parts and all that. Is are the pickups custom? No, so the, these are Lindy Fraylins. Lindy Fraylins. So Lindy is a different guy, but super red pickups. And um, I, I love him. He's like, it's probably my favorite pickup company. It's Lindy Fraylins. Almost as good as Lowers. <laughs> it's debatable. It's debatable. Yeah. But yeah, Casey's crazy. Casey's crazy. Uh, you guys should check out his stuff. He built. He's built a few different guitars that are pretty wild. One of them literally has. Uh, and mother of pearl inlay the Hawaiian Islands on the neck. It's like it, it's like super accurate. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Another one he like built like for a dentist. She just wanted to like put it on her wall, and so he like inlaid like a tooth in the neck. So it's like he'll do like Somebody's crazy actual tooth. <laughs> no, like pearl That'd inlay. Creepy. That would be super creepy. I have all these teeth from patients. I want them put in. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> that would be super weird. <laughs> But all that to say that he's, he'll do pretty much anything you want him to do, if you want it. So if you want a tooth on your neck, he can do that. <laughs> and you said you had a telly? Yeah, so my other guitar, I didn't bring it, but it's a it's a telly. It's also got humbuckers on it. And uh, it's actually a Squire. Um, but I just kind of basically replaced like, all the electronics. And yeah, I just kind of tricked it out. I don't know, I just, it was cheap and I liked the way it played, so I've kind of just... Stuck with it. Have you heard of Sugi guitars? Sugi? I don't think so. Huh. Saw it in LA. This guy had uh, looks like they specialize in the telly and they make customs and it's Japanese design but American made. Cool. So I love. I didn't know if like you heard of them because you said something like. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're Sugi Rainmaker. If you ever get a chance, it's worth it's worth a look at. And That's awesome. Man. Really follow through guy. So you yeah, yeah. Back to him and he'll customize it. And so my friend got that and I had to watch. Let's talk tone. It's the tone class. It's the loud class. The loud class. Um, you want me to kind of start with? Kind of it, it has your name on the. It does. It has my name on it. So I guess I'll start. You should start. All right. Um, well, so this is my amp that I primarily use, uh, like for conferences and tours and stuff, Hope and I, we typically play stereo, so we'll have two amps set up. That and those can kind of... for this class. Yeah, that'd be way too much. Uh, but this is the amp that I always have, you know, regardless of what I'm pairing with it. Um, it's, a, it's just a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, but it's a custom shop one that Fender did. They made like 800 or something. So it's got like, you know, a different speaker, and I put like vintage tubes in it, and so it's got, you know, it's got its own tone. It's very fendery, but kind of in its own uh, unique way. So that's my amp, and uh, it's got reverb, which that's a pretty big part of my tone. Um, I just like the way that fenders kind of have that squishy uh, mid-range to them. So pretty much, and you guys, you can kind of come up and look at settings too. Don't feel like kind of in the other class we did. Don't feel like you have to sit there. Um, typically, what I'll do for <laughs> typically what I'll do for like when I play live, I'll kind of decide where I want to set my volume. Um, 
So I think we talked about it in one of the other classes. I like, I really like my amp to have a lot of headroom, which basically just means you can turn it up pretty loud before it'll start to break up. Um, so I love, I love being able to have like good clean tone live, you know. But then if you like really dig in, you can kind of bring out you know a little bit of that grit. And so it's gonna be a little bit loud, but usually like for live, I'll have it at like three and a half or so. So if you want, you can get like semi like clean tone. Here. Whereas if you dig in though, you can get some of that grit out there. Um, and then as far as just like my cues on this amp, I kind of just know where I typically set them. It's this isn't going to be like the setting that works for all of you guys because mm -hmm. every amp's different, every guitar is different, um, every scenario is different. You know, PA you're playing through, whatnot. So, but this is kind of like my starting point, um, which you guys should all have too. Kind of, you know, like a kind of a spot in your amp where you know typically this is where I'm going to start, and then if I need to make adjustments, you kind of do that. So, I mean, one thing that Pope and I do a lot too is before a set. We'll plug in just directly into our amps and just kind of get it dialed, feeling like, all right, that's pretty close. <coughs> yeah. And then we'll run it back out, you know, to our pedal boards and and kind of go from there. And then if the sound guy's like, it's way too harsh, you know, you need to dial back something, then we'll we'll go from there and adjust it. Yeah. So what's your what's your breakup point? Um, so for right here, right where it is about now is like three and a half. Right. It's kind of where you know you can still get some, some pretty clean tone, um, but if you want to dig in, you can start to get that breakup. So. Again, that's a preference thing. I really like having lots of headroom. I like being able to have that clean tone, you know, for those moments where you just want to have. Just kind of pretty high, like whatever stuff. And then if you want to get crazy, you know, you can really dig in and bring out some more driving. And that's without even having to use overdrives. And that's a whole nother thing. Um, I kind of like being able to just with purely my amp being able to get a little bit clean and a little bit of grit if I want. Wow. Once I start stacking mm. overdrives and all that, that's like a whole another step basically. So, but tone wise, since this is a class about tone, um, you know, this is kind of your starting point, your amp, your guitar. Um, so these pickups, I don't know what you guys, how much you guys know about pickups. There's like different, you know, too well. yeah, you can wind them higher or lower output basically. These are like 8K. so. They're not super high output, they're not super low, they're kind of like in the middle, so they're pretty like warm and mellow, and they're not like screaming hot or anything. Basically you start there, and then your amp, so those are my settings. Um, from there, um, yeah, so like I was saying, I kind of like to add like drive and stuff. So from there I have a clean boost slash overdrive pedal that I'll use. Um, so basically, basically it'll go from like this to make sure it's in the right spot to like this. Which that sounds super drivey right now. Super I don't. Loud. Yeah, it's <laughs> so loud. I'll turn it back down. Sorry. This amp is like crazy loud. It's loud. That's more accurate of what it would typically sound like live, as far as how much I'm boosting it. So I, it's an overdrive pedal, but I kind of use it as a clean boost. Um, although there's times where I'll turn up the drive and get more kind of driviness out of it or whatever. Um, and from there, we kind of talked the other day about stacking overdrives, which you can do. I don't do that a ton, but I do sometimes, and that's what I use my OCD pedal for. Um, that's a second generation OCD, which there's a difference. They make them now, but they don't sound nearly the same. So they have the red light and they're okay. I don't know. The old ones are pretty sweet though, but I blue use that LEDs sometimes to stack. Better. Huh? Blue LEDs sound better. The blue, yeah, it's just the blue LED. It sounds so much better. So. So, right now it's set to add a lot more overdrive. So we were doing stuff this morning that was pretty heavy. So I had it turned up, but so those are kind of my two overdrives. And that's so that's basically how I stack that for like drive. So I'd have it louder, you know, in a live setting typically, so there'd be more breakup than that. But then I'd stack the and then put CD on top of that. So um, for a lot of rhythm stuff, 
a lot of times I won't even go to the OCD. I'll just set my overdriver to kind of fill in with the rhythm stuff. A lot of times I do that when I'm playing with Pope, and he's doing a lot of the drivier, like mid rangey high kind of parts. I'll just kind of incorporate the overdriver with that. Um, yeah, do you want to say some stuff about yeah. your, well, your tone and your amp? This, uh, this is an amp that took me a couple years to find, but once I found it, I was kind of sold on it. Um, you ever heard of, heard of a company called 65 Amps? These are hand built in Hollywood. And um, as far as boutique amps go, they, they kind of make a really wide range of stuff. And while they are kind of pricey, um, and I guess they look a little bit flashy too, um, they sound really, really good. And I like this one because it's super mid rangey and punchy, like no pedals on it. You can hear it's very different than Bobby's amp. Got a little more country training, and that's on two. This is only 18 watts, but it gets really, really loud. So on like five. Especially with the telly, it might be a little bright in here. Um, and that's an 18 watt amp, so you're just... Yeah, it's an 18 watt amp, so it doesn't have as much headroom, but I mean, again, it's it's a really dynamic amp too, because I can dime it and just get really, really drivey, but pull it down. And it's still pretty clean, but then... You know, So I just like that it's got a lot of um, dynamic in an amp already, you know, if for some reason my pedals don't work, um, I can get a lot out of an amp. And that's, it's kind of a, another thing too, like um, in a studio setting, sometimes I just won't even use drive pedals, I'll just crank the heck out of this thing, yeah. and it's everything I need, so um, as far as like gear or finding your tone, I'd say the most important thing is probably finding an amp that resonates with you as a player. Um, I played amps for four years before I settled on this thing, and I played everything I could get my hands on. And um, this one did it for me. Um, it's got two channels. I use this channel, which is an EF86 channel. It just has um, just the volume, which is volume, obviously. But the more you turn it up, the dirtier it gets. Um, the tone just kind of rolls off the, the high end. It doesn't really... Um, boost low frequencies or anything. It's very, um, it's very, very much true to what your pickups are actually putting out. So I'll just put it on five and kind of just sweep it. So this is all the way up. So it's pretty bright, but with a telly like with a Veritas or something with humbuckers, I might want to have it that bright, um, just because those pickups are kind of lower output humbuckers yeah. and pretty dark. Um, but at the same time, you know, you can totally go jazzy with this. I added some jazz chords there, but um, I typically keep it on six. And then there's a switch on this thing that kind of beefs up the mids, which is really cool because you can just have it real. Quick. And um, if any of you have played with a match list, they kind of have a similar knob. And this is really cool for um, valing in the low end, because a lot of times low end can be, like as a guitar player, you want it to sound really big and full, but often that kind of translates into mud. This switch is cool because I can kind of start with no low end at all. Here it's kind of like 60s AC30. Like total Beatles tone, but you can kind of beef it up. And so you hear it kind of adding more low in there. It's really cool to kind of dial in the, the low in that way. So it's got six positions. I'm typically on four with the telly. Just kind of fill it out a little bit more. Um, but this is this is like my main amp for everything. I, I always use this for just about everything. Um, unless there's a studio situ situation that calls for something different. And then... Um, for my tone, at least, I, I like the sound of a, a compressor always on, and it just kind of evens things out, especially with an amp like this that um, can get kind of, um, I don't know how to describe it other than kind of, not harsh, but kind of spiky, kind of bitey. bitey, yeah, a lot of bite. <laughs> dramatic. I find this kind of makes it just a little smoother. Here, that kind of squishes things a little bit. I'm not really losing a ton of dynamic, but I'm just getting a little more um, squish out of it and making it a little
little smoother. And then um, pretty much always on, I guess I'll put this back, I'll typically run it maybe four. So it's already got a decent amount of drive on the amp, like I said, I don't really do clean guitars very often. Um, I'll just rely on pick attack to... Then I'll leave a tube screamer on most of the time, and um, it's kind of funny. Like in person, to me, it, it often sounds a little weird. Like I think it sounds good, but sometimes it's like, oh, you know, compared to kind of like, wow, I just lost a ton of low end. But um, with in ears and in a mix, it sounds freaking awesome, which is always king. If you standing out front there for y'all, it probably sounds a little bright, a little harsh. But if you stick your ear right in the speaker, which I've been doing. Um, Dude. It sounds totally different. So that's kind of an always-on thing for me. And then I stack um, with an M drive, which is a pretty cool um, transparent overdrive. Like it sounds like my tone is just a little fatter and a little louder. So off, on. And then on the other side of the tube screamer, the signal chain, if you were in the class where we kind of went through this kind of stuff. Um, they're set up so that the tube screamer is kind of in between these. So this is closer to the guitar and this is closer to the amp. And um, the Joyride just makes things a lot louder and um, a little a little brighter. It stays pretty true to what your amp is doing. But... It adds quite a bit and it gets pretty dirty and hairy and it's really loud too so I like that those are kind of the just the basics of my tone I don't always have reverb on I'd say most of the time I probably do but it's just to kind of uh, kind of help the stereo field um, kind of widens it yeah actually we could demonstrate that Bobby you yeah. should um, plug this well play your amp first with just like um, mono verb and then plug this in and you can kind of, do, does anybody in here not run stereo? Who doesn't run stereo? Who just goes one amp? Cool, so probably half of you guys. Um, this, this should kind of just show you the difference between mono and stereo and how big it can actually. Do you want me to show them the reverb in my amp? And then show them like, like the reverb, like the crazy verb from the blue oh, sky. Oh, that's what you want to do. Yeah, cool. And then, and then go, uh, yeah. sorry everybody, it's loud. And then go stereo with them. And uh, you'll see kind of how much bigger everything gets. I mean, of course, yeah. you're adding another amp. But, yeah. So that's just the way it is. So what we do, um, because stereo is like a, a left and right thing, right? Um, what we'll do is we'll have, so if both of these were Bobby's amps, he would probably have his main one in his right ear, and then his secondary in his left ear. And 
those amps would be exclusive for that year. Um, so you just get the biggest degree of separation you can, and that just really, really opens up guitar tones in, 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 your, in your mix. So like when we play live together, yeah, for both of us, like typically Pope's like on the left side of the stage, and I'm on the right side of the stage, and so I'll put my amp on my right side and him on my left since he's on the left side of me, and that kind of just helps. Yeah, and it's a little different because we both run stereo, yeah. so <laughs> we'll make him, we'll kind of have his right, well, not as loud hurt. as yeah. One side. We kind of make them a little bit opposite, but we're still like, I guess it's easier if I just describe my mix. Um, <laughs> So in my ears, I'm typically on the left left ear. That's where my um, where I'm mostly hearing my guitar. But I'll still have some in my right. Just my right ear will be turned down. So my mix, my guitar will be left heavy, and but it's still stereo, and his will be right heavy, still in stereo. But you still have your other amp in the right with him, mm -hmm. and, and vice, vice versa. versa with him. Yeah. Right. And Makes what sense. that does, it, it's, that's actually the same thing that Chris, our front of house guy, does with guitars in the house, mm -hmm. and. Um, You'll notice that it sounds way bigger that way than just um, you know having one on one side and one on the other. And you couldn't really do that in a front of house mix without out of sounding weird. Yeah. Because if you think about it, people standing on this side would only hear one guitar. Vice versa on the other. So you kind of mix mixed ears in a similar way there. Just kind of blend them. Yeah. But it's really cool because the guitars separate well, and um, you uh, you can still tell what's going on and what you're playing and I can hear him clearly and it sounds big and awesome and everybody's happy. Yeah. Unless you're me because my inners broke last night. And that bummed me out really bad. What kind of inners were there? I have uh, UE7s, ultimate, ultimate ears. ears. <laughs> and I just like Sevens. twisted it out of my ear, which you normally do if you have molded in ears, they twist in and out. And um, the connector just like broke. So it just like fell to the ground. The sevens? How many speakers do those have? Or drivers? Those are just triple drivers. Triple drivers triple. Yeah. Um, how many of you use in ears? That's worth mentioning. Um, That's awesome. If you're if you already use in ears and you're looking at getting custom molds, mm -hmm. um, or you don't use in ears and are looking for custom molds, I actually recommend getting um, unless you can get like really nice like yeah. JH16s with eight drivers in each ear or whatever, um, which most of us can't. I I can't afford that. That's crazy. Um, I actually recommend getting um, a lower amount of drivers, like around three. Really? Um, something without the mid-range drivers, yeah, because unless you have really, really stellar um, in-ear mixes, the mid-range always gets jacked up. Like, the mid-range is the hardest thing for a lot of sound guys to focus in. So unless you have a really, really good guy running a really, really good board who really, really knows what he's doing... <laughs> um, yeah, unless you're just lucky, like we kind of are here, um, I would definitely get triple drivers, and I only use triple drivers. Yeah, here. I was even debating on getting those red expensive ones that are on the site, the thousand four hundred dollar ones, because we play a lot of acoustic sets. So that attention to detail on those extra three tuners that it has in the drivers. So the six drivers. Yes. Yeah, si si six drivers is a little different. Um, when you start, I think when you get six or more, you're you're probably going to do fine. It's just most, you know, if you can afford those, that's amazing. Like well, that's, I, gotta, I can't now. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. But no, if, yeah, could you recommend those? Yeah, if you can, yeah, if you can get really, really good in-ears, like, it's totally recommended because, of course, they're going to sound better. Okay. But um, if you're kind of on a budget and can only spend a couple hundred on them, um, triple drivers will work really, really great. Um, and we actually all like the 535s. Yeah, sure, sure. makes the 535, and those are actually, I like them better than our UV 7s. Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, they're awesome, they sure and they're sure, uh, 535s. 535s. Are they SE? 535s. Yeah. SE 535s. They're, they're and they're, they're not, the not like crazy expensive five. either, like, I mean... I think they're four, three, yeah, 450 or something really? like that. Yeah. And what do you guys recommend them? They're just, they sound pretty natural for an in-ear that's not molded. And, um... I like them for a guitar, though, too, because yeah. I've tried different ones, and like, you know, obviously as a guitar player, you're... You want to have an in ear that's going to somewhat make your tone feel accurate, you yeah. know, to what your amp actually sounds like, because it's more inspiring, you feel like you play better and all that. But totally. So 535s, I found, I like, you know, the way they translate what my amp's doing. So they're universal, though, they're not like sealed and custom. Yeah, when you just buy 535s, I don't, they don't do like yeah. that whole thing. 
Um, the cool thing is, if you go to your audiologist, like mm -hmm. hearing aid center or whatever, um, most of them can make like a little tip that's actually molded, so you just have your molds done, mm -hmm. and make you a tip that you can put on oh, your E5s. Yeah. So some people do that. Um, it's not as good as an actual molded ear because you don't get the full isolation of, mm -hmm. I forget what this part of your ear is called. Um, so then like a, when you get molds taken, you get something called like a full CIC canal goes down around the first bend and like fills up this whole space. So I mean you it feels like you're in outer space. Yeah. It's crazy. They seal up the second one and set, everything literally goes it's awesome. And then it's like dead quiet. It's you so can hear quiet. your heart beating and then you're got this bite block in and you're drooling all over yourself. Yeah. Like, this is cool. <laughs> Getting in here is yeah. Um, but so yeah, tri triple drive. It's kind of a kind of a less is more kind of mm -hmm. thing. Does your quality get hit if you if you use Avium instead of like a battery pack? Um, the trouble with Avioms is is it, Avioms are great. It's all in the way you set them up. Most um, churches will set them up. Um, I forget if it's pre or post fade or whatever it's called right now. But um, basically, most churches I found that have them set them up to where as the sound guy is making like EQ adjustments on the console and stuff like that, it changes in your ears, yep. which is typically, it's, it's just terrible because once you find something you like, the sound guy is almost always going to change something and then you're freaking out again wondering why your intermix changed. And also a lot of them just set them up in mono and mono is just a really bummer way to run in-ears. Yeah. Um, if you, if you have if you're to, running like stereo guitars. Yeah. Well, you can't run stereo guitars. There's no point in running stereo guitars, honestly, if you have mono in ears unless mm. your front of house is stereo as well and then it's just yeah. a sound guy thing and you're picking which amp you like better basically with aviams all you're able to control at that point is levels mm -hmm. you know on your pack you can turn things up and down but you can't control yeah so it's, it's all it's, at the mercy of it yeah, yeah. yeah if you have aviams at your church um i suggest like talking with your sound guy and making sure you set them up so that when he makes changes on the console it doesn't change anything um in your in your ears and also try to set them up stereo. Um, a lot of places, if you, especially if it's a smaller church or medium-sized church, don't really have the board capability to do everything in stereo. But um, at least being able to um, start with drums in stereo is a huge deal. And um, being able to do guitars after that, I think, is... So stereos, they would bo both, all the, the drums would all be in both ears, is that what you're saying? Ba basically, uh, a stereo mix just enables you to, to do panning, which is where you can move certain instruments or certain, certain parts of instruments into another ear or towards another ear. Right. Um, and what it does is it portrays the way you actually hear things more accurately. Um, if we only heard stuff just straight on, loud noises and stuff would just get crazy chaotic. I mean, if you've ever had a mono mix and it, everything's just super loud, you know how crazy and frustrating that is. Yeah. Um, but when you have a stereo mix, it's like what we'll do, we'll, we'll pan drums, so kick and snare will be in the middle, but toms will be in the left, because if you're facing a drum kit or you're playing a drum kit, when you hit the tom, you're actually hearing it more towards your left side than you are your right. And it's part of what gives you kind of that depth of instrument and sound. Um, so setting as many things up in stereo it's just better because when you're mixing more clarity, you can actually put more instruments in your mix because you actually have the capability to hear you them. You split everything up so you can be separate. Exactly. So, so, um, so just for clarity, my friend actually just told me about this, how they set up their avioms mm -hmm. and pretty good sized church. And then for some reason they come, something just happens right before the set mm -hmm. and everything's reset in their avioms. And they're like, what just happened? And they're all freaking out. Yeah, and that's... Was that what you were just... Kind of no, that's or? that sounds like a power issue to me, or um, like one of the at the main hub, maybe one of the main cables came out or something. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be near the board. Then. That would wherever your main connector is for your Abbey Oh so, yeah, it's not on your my, it's not my church, but I was just yeah. playing there and I finally experienced it. I was like, oh, this isn't fun at, yeah. <laughs> at all. Yeah, I mean, no. it's all run through Cat Five cable, so yeah. like if the, your main line going back to like the board, like where to get unplugged or something like that, that yeah. would. Pretty sure reset everything. Yeah. Unless you're saving mi your mixes. Yeah. Which, you which is do. really smart. You gotta do that, Daniel. Yeah. When you when you find a mix you like, just <laughs> always save, hold down save. the save button. Yeah. Because yeah. I've done that before too. Like right before we yeah. play, like I'll bump it or something, and it'll be like this janky church setup, and it and I lose my whole mix, and I'm like trying to <laughs> real quick, and everyone said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, frick, I just missed a chord. You know.
that's <laughs> not fun at all. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, Bobby and I like to run things pretty, maybe not necessarily Q and A style, but like yeah. dialogue. So, is there any questions you have for us specifically about tones, and so we're not just like rambling on? This is how I do. Yeah. Yeah. You started off on your amp. Yeah. Just, like figuring out. I was always told to. Um, that plug your guitar straight into your amp, find that nice clean, uh, whatever your preference is, if you want a lot of headroom, if you don't, mm -hmm. then work on your pedal board, and I would love to know, um, well, first of all, is that right? Or would you suggest that in um, trying to find, like, at least... Uh, well, like a lot of stuff that we've been talking about, there's not necessarily, like, a right mm -hmm. or wrong way. Like, so much of this stuff is subjective, because, you know, if it sounds good, then it's right, you know, and so, um, but there is certain tricks and certain things that can be helpful. I find it helpful sometimes, yeah, to go and plug directly into my amp and kind of get uh, a range and an idea of where I want that to be set. I think, you know, Pope would agree, he does the same thing a lot. Um, so I find that useful. You don't have to. I mean, you could totally be run through your pedal board and do the same thing. Um, but yeah, I, I like to do that a lot. Um, and then kind of from there, set stuff, pedals and all that on my board and make sure that I'm, you know, liking how they line up before my, my amps up. Um, so, you know, yeah, like with drives, making sure they're blended right so that when I'm hitting them on, it's not like going from my clean tone in my amp to like, you know, 30% to 100%. You know, I like to have a, a nice gradual build when I'm stacking those, so. But I would say, yeah, so to answer your question, I think that's a good idea. <coughs> when you start with like your amp and like it's all like zeroed out or whatever, for for getting your um, your sound and everything, how what would you start with? Like, where would you turn your mids? Where would you turn? Start with uh, start with just volume, I would say, because um, again, you know, like if it's a tube amp, you want to find where you like your headroom to be, you know. So, yeah, the sweet spot, man. So start with start with that first, um, and then you know, yeah, you can get into EQs and stuff, and you know, if you're like, well, it's too dark or too bright, you can start adjusting from there, but. It's really, a lot of people will, will ask me and, and Bobby, like, um, where do you guys set your knobs and stuff like that? Yeah. And we, we tr I think we try to explain to people, like, we could tell you where we set our knobs, but it probably wouldn't help your guitar sound any better because your guitar is going to sound different yeah, sound totally through your different. amp with your fingers. Even if I played your guitar through your amp, it's still going to sound different because we all have different fingers. Yeah. And that's actually another really yeah. important part of tone. Even... I guess that even comes before your amp or your guitar is it's mm -hmm. it's your the way you're you're playing with your left and yep. your right hand. You know, the way you're digging in, all that affects tone. It's a know. it's a huge deal. Yeah. Um, and it's totally true. Like I could play through Pope's rig everything that he does and I would it, I guarantee you it would sound way different than when he plays. Just because we're different players, you know, the same thing if you play mine. <laughs> so everybody's got their own unique, you know, approach to guitar with those things. Yeah. So so that's kind of the number one thing for finding I yeah. guess, your tone, is fingers. But again, like in dialing in an amp, it's really just as simple as using your ears and standing in front of it and being like, just play a couple chords or you know, play some leads or whatever you're gonna play, and just listen to how it sounds. And you can kind of. Does anybody here? When I was talking, kind of like as guitar players, we kind of have that sound in our head that we kind of go for and we right. chase after. Yeah. You kind of just compare what you're hearing to that sound in your head, and okay, well, the sound I'm hearing is a little bit brighter, so okay, I'll turn the highs up. But now it's okay. Maybe I need a little more mids. Okay, less highs now. Um, a little too muddy. I'll turn the lows down. Um, if you're like me, I like simple things. Tone knob, really nice. Just <laughs> boom, got it. Um, so yeah, it's 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 literally just using ears and, and practicing it that way as opposed to oh I wonder where so and so sets knobs or I wonder yeah. you know what settings somebody uses. It actually kind of develops your style within your own playing a little bit more. Um, yeah, and I would encourage you guys too to to explore that and mess around with that. You know, kind of become your own guitar player. You know, discover your sound and figure out you know your style and. And all that, because I mean, it's awesome to reference and get inspiration from other guys. But you know, ultimately, you want to be known for playing how you play, you know, and having that sound that you have. And I mean, that's kind of the cool thing is we're always growing. And yeah, and that's why you guys are 
on your worship teams and stuff, you know? Yeah. You were chosen for a reason, not just because you can play a guitar, you know, a couple songs. Like, I think it's deeper than that, you know? Your playing is an extension of who you are as a person. Um, so make sure you're doing everything you can to put who you are out yeah. through your instrument. And I think that's what attracts worship leaders or, you know, stuff to us as guitar players. It's, it's a very unique and very individual instrument. Yeah. As is every it's instrument. But it's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. How do you uh, develop your fingers to be able to get a better tone out of them? I mean, it's, it, honestly, it's just sitting down and practicing as much as you can. Um, like practicing other songs or? Pra practice or everything. I, when I was, when I was, I've, I played guitar since I was three. My parents bought me a guitar because I told them I wanted a guitar ministry and I just didn't put it down. Um, and when I was like early teens, I, I would practice for about eight hours a day. And um, what this guy taught me, he went to Berkeley and I took lessons from him for like five or six years. Um, when I first came to him, like I could do a lot of stuff. I just didn't do it maybe necessarily the cleanest and my practice method was kind of all jacked up. And, um, what I learned from him is slowing down and making sure you get things right is the best thing you can possibly do. You know, if your G chords are kind of janky, take the time and be like, okay, how is my finger um, hitting that string? something at 70 BPM, play it at 70 BPM for a little while, and then bump it up to 75. And when you can nail it at 75 for a while, bump it up to 80. And you keep going, and you get faster, and you get better, but what you're teaching yourself is you're teaching yourself to actually hit the notes instead of just like fumble through stuff and sound like everybody at Guitar Center that we hate hearing on a weekend. <laughs> um, it's just like with anything in life, like you care about something, you're going to take the time to do it right, um, no matter what it is, whether it's a relationship, like you'll put work into it and you'll make sure you're taking care of um, the other person's needs in the way that's healthy. Um, playing guitar is the, the same thing, you're making sure you're doing things right and setting yourself up on a good foundation. So start slow, take it easy, um, and, then, and then challenge yourself. And Frustrate yourself a little bit, and um, when you get frustrated, take a break, cool off, remind yourself, I'm going to nail that next week, and the week after that, nail it even more, even faster. So. Two things. I was telling both to you, and maybe you guys have just brought it up. One is, what's a good band for good influences on tone? Because, I mean, I can't really, I'm not really good at explaining to my students, because I also do the main service, but I've mm -hmm. also been put in charge of the youth worship. Um, yeah. And I, it's hard to explain, and I never really knew that until I got asked it by, like, four of them. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I'm going to go to school. Just give me, like, four more weeks to get in. And then I'll say, man, that's, that's my first question. And then um, the second is tone in regards to two electric players such as yourselves both playing are capable of playing the parts in a theme. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because sometimes I like have my tone like I love it and I'm like I do not like how my tone matches with that guy. I'm mm -hmm. gonna make sure I never have him on my road to drum. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean like but it drives me nuts so I'm like I don't like yeah. my tone anymore now because yeah. that's right. silly. Yeah, that that's makes so. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well on that I mean that's kind of something that you have to discuss and figure out with whoever you're playing with mm -hmm. and that's kind of something we touched on in one of our other classes too is yeah. you know it's important when you're playing with other people especially in worship you know it's those relationships and um, you know one thing with all the 
at least the core guys especially that you see at Bethel, like we're good friends. And so, you know, like we hang out a lot and that all plays into when we're on stage playing music. You know, we want it to be the best it can be. And so, you know, for like Pope and I with guitar, you know, obviously we want to make our sounds and our tones and everything blend the best. So, you know, going into a set or whatever, like we definitely are figuring out in like a rehearsal, you know, we're figuring out parts and you know, you're doing this or whatever. And, you know, tone wise, we don't really have to talk about it too much because we kind of know now like what we do. We kind of have we, learned. We kind of lucked out because yeah. our tone, like on our own before we knew each other, um, like we didn't really change anything. We just started playing together and kind of realized like, oh, our tones complement each other. This is yeah. kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. But in pulling apart our tones, we've noticed you know, mine tends to be dirtier and mid rangier and his tends to be uh, cleaner and deeper and sparklier. And then he goes from clean to crazy dirty. He gets way dirtier than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby's just like here and here. He's like two extremes, and I'm just like the meet in the middle kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, just kind of, you know, whoever you're playing with, it's important to, you know, talk to them or whatever, you know, figure out like, hey, let's, figure out what kind of tones or whatever we're going to be trying to achieve in the set. Or, mm -hmm. um, so that's what I would do with that. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay. As far as influences, but I'd say Bethel music probably has the best. Yeah, <laughs> I was going yeah. 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 to say. When it comes to guitar tone, like... <laughs> the, the worst is probably Jesus culture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, oh, okay. It's okay. You're not recorded. <laughs> you were Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to appear on Jeffrey Cummings. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put it's it on joke. BSW 2013. You understand. I know you were hating on me in your classes. I don't even play. I understand. Um, influence. It's funny. Like, I don't listen to a lot of worship for guitar. Yeah, me neither. But, okay. Um, no, that's, that's fine. I've heard. In fact, I don't at all. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Do, do you think that helps? Uh, um, I mean, do you think like that, do you think it would help to listen to worship music? I mean... Uh, yeah, honestly, I'm not. I don't really listen to a lot of records with the idea of like, oh, I want my guitar to sound that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll kind of, I'll be like, oh, that's a cool sound. I wonder how they did that or thing. I mean, little things like that. And I mean, for certain things like when I play slide, I will totally admit, yeah, I'm totally ripping off James Duke. But it's not because I want to sound exactly like James Duke. Mm -hmm. It's because what he does with the slide lends itself to worship music really, really well. And that's an influence that I've drawn from and kind of incorporated in, into my own playing style. Okay, so I got James. James is great for worship music. Um, Duke? James Duke, yeah. Cool. He's killer. He plays for a John Mark McMillan in the uh, Elevation Church. I'm a huge, well, Pope is too, but I'm a huge Ryan Adams fan. Yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to guitar tones, man. That guy has some of the most BA guitar tones. Yeah, and he's cool because he doesn't just do one style of music either, but everything he does is rad. So, I mean, he does straight up rock and roll, he does country, he does folk, and everything, man, his tones are just like sick. Yeah. So I would pick up all his records, you know, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, buy every rock. Buy Especially a lot of rock and roll. That's the best. Yeah, rock and roll is a great record. <laughs> um, a just for guitar, it's unreal. Um, so I love him. Yeah. And probably for me, my other, like, biggest influence, and they, same thing, they have a pretty wide range of, like, tone stuff. Is, I, I'm a huge Radiohead fan. They're probably like just musically, they're my biggest influence. Yeah. Um, so, and they do yeah a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Like on their newer records, they're doing a lot more dry, um, clean tone kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go back to records like OK Computer, it was more kind of drivey, big yeah. reverbs, whatever kind of stuff. But everything they do is awesome, I think. So. Yeah. That's funny. I have more like player influences. I guess like I was always into like Billy Gibbons or ZZ Top. Um, I really love Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys. His yeah. guitar tones are amazing. <coughs> and yeah, and they don't always lend themselves to worship. Granted, right now I'm the only worship guy I know that's using a fuzz face, and I kind of feel really good about that. Um, but I think what inspires me about their tone is it's unique and it's it's different, and that's kind of what I want to pull away. Like, it inspires me to figure out what I want my guitar to sound like. Um, and also, like, a lot of country players. Paisley and, you know, Oddly Green is amazing. And Peter Stroud is awesome. Peter Stroud is 50% um, of the guys who make 65 amps. I hear my tune.
it. And here was the look at my phonic. A little bit, yeah. How old is this? Uh, four months. If your aunt does this, you probably need to change your tubes. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, why not? Recommendations for tubes. For the Bobby rhythm. knows more about tubes than I do. No, I don't. I, I actually, I really don't. I, I know guys that know a lot about tubes, and I usually go to them and ask them what they think I should do. Uh, what I've typically done just in my amp is, you know, through some cool guys that I know back in Portland, uh, I've put in some cool vintage tubes um, from like the 60s, actually. So in here I've got, they're like, I think they're called Bugle Boys, and they were made by Muller, or the same company that makes Muller tubes. Bugle Boys? Yeah, Bugle Boy, I think. Um, I think that's what they are. But look at Muller. Muller's amazing. Um, they're a br British made tube. And uh, I think Bugle Boy is like the Holland version of them or whatever. But if you can find them online, like, you know, in good shape, pick them up because they're super rad. Yeah. So. I've got all new tubes in, in mind. Um, just because at the time I didn't have any money for NOS tubes because they're pretty pricey. And they're totally worth it because they sound really good. Yeah. Um, but I needed to buy tubes because I, I would turn it on and just go Brah! really, really loud. Yep. No, no, yep. no sound whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so I am using right now a company called TAD. Um, I would recommend TADs and then um, um, JJs. The TADs are rumored to be a little more um, quality than the JJs, but JJs are what came in this amp stock and. Um, Right now, it's compared to the way it sounded with the JJ's in it. It sounds just a little too harsh for me, just 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 barely. I'm really sensitive to like harsh amps, and that's why I don't really like Matchless and some other stuff. Um, orange. Oh, oh. Sorry, Sorry if you have an orange. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a top end thing, and I think it's maybe just because I probably have some sort of hearing loss or something. Um, but. Yeah, so JJ's or TADs are pretty pretty awesome tubes for new tubes. I'd stay away from group tubes or groovy tubes. Or yeah, you know what um, is actually you guys should write this down if you're interested in getting good tubes. Euro tubes is yeah. the company called. Those guys are awesome. Are they? Okay. Yes. Shops on there, but I'm like, dude, that's, I don't know about that. It looks kind of. Oh, they're totally legit. Really? Yeah, their website's so hokey looking. It's hilarious. It but, is. That's yeah, like, but if you call them, it's usually Bob will answer the phone, like the guy from your tubes, and um, the Big Church actually worked at back in Cortland, Oregon before I moved up here. Ordered all our tubes from there all the time. Super awesome. The cool thing about those guys is you can call them and be like, hey, this is the amp I have. This is kind of what I want my amp to sound like. You know, I want it to be more modern or more vintage or whatever. And they'll basically be like, okay, these are the tubes you need. Sweet. And they're okay. super smart, super easy to work with. Totally recommend them. I was going to say, their site is vast, so I'm like, how... Yeah, do I just call them. them. There's a number. I wouldn't <laughs> even, like... Because they have different... Like, you can pick stuff out and just order it, but I would just call them, especially if it's, like, your first time and you're mm -hmm. learning about tubes. Give them a call and just be like, hey, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Or you can even just say, like, this is the amp I have, and I don't know mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. What's a good a good tube set? And they'll yeah. be like, oh, dude, I got the thing for you. And they're super awesome, very helpful. Yeah, so but, yeah I so call those guys. Euro tubes. Euro. Yep, Euro. Easy. He usually answers the phone. Euro tubes. Does anybody have a bad cat? Jeffrey does. <laughs> Jeffrey has an endorsement with bad cat, so he has his own signature model. Um, I'm not jealous. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> jealous. The bad cats actually sound really good. Um, they're yeah, they're a little. Though. I know it's. Huh? <laughs> it's, it's purely opinion, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I've played a lot of them that I don't like. I actually like Jeffrey's. Okay, yeah. Jeffrey's, always, Jeffrey's is 40 watts, though, so it's just, like, so oh, loud. Shit. You're just like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome. Yeah. It's like I, I guess I've only played one. I didn't like it. But. Which one did you play, though? Yeah. I wish I could remember. It was a combo. I don't... Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, my size. I'm looking to sell mine, my box, and then bump up to a different one. Yeah. Yeah. The back cats are cool, though. I like Jeffrey's. It's called the Luca. It's named after his little boy. Boy. Oh. So, uh, if you're looking for bad cat... Jeffrey. Is it a combo? Of course. Yeah, uh, I think you can get it in a combo, but I think it's like advertised as a head and a cap. Okay. Also, do you, do you like, use a head, head uh, like half stacks at all? Uh, it, it depends. I uh, I went to Toronto back in March, and they had one of these for me in a head and a cab, and they also had a JCM 800 from the 80s, 
which if you don't know what a JCM 800 is, that's the amp that Slash used back in the 80s. <laughs> wow. um, and I freaking love those amps, because you can get amazing clean tones, but they like break up in this very... Actually, the other channel of yeah. this amp does Marshall really well, because um, it's a 12AX7 side, so just like... <laughs> and just like rock um, so it sounded kind of like that only I didn't have it set that crazy um, I didn't, haven't used that channel in a long time I might start doing that that was your, punchy your 80s rock sets oh my god I hate 80s music but um so JCM 800s are cool if you can find them from the 80s Marshall stopped making good amps in the 80s so anything 90s or after don't buy it but 80s and before totally buy it it looks pretty nice I'm, I'm a Fender guy, man. I, it's, again, it's all preference, but yeah. typically when I play stereo, I play through this, and then the other amp I'm playing through, it, it's Chris is actually the front of house guy, and it's a, a, a Pro Sonic, which those things are sweet. Um, yeah, I, I love the way they sound together. Pro Sonic? Mm -hmm. We're looking at 65, but mm -hmm. also like divided by 13. Have you guys They're played killer. through any of them? They're killer. They're I haven't killer. played through them, but yeah. Are they good? I love them. They're killer. You have to be careful. Some of them... Um, are a little weird sounding. Um, the I hate companies that like the amp isn't like a name like the London or the Luca yeah. or it has a name. It's like numbers and letters because I just can never remember them. Um, but I do know the good divided by thirteens that I really like are the FTR thirty seven and the RSA twenty. So check those ones out. Those check are sweet. Those out. Is that the London? This is a London, yes. Okay. But and this is actually an older one. Um, so I don't, I, I don't know if they're making this particular one anymore. I know they're making one called the London, London Pro. Pro. Yeah, it has like a head. Yeah, this is this one's from 2008 or something. I've had this for a little while. I, I bought this right before they got really really big. Um, which is kind of awesome because it's weird. I've played some other yeah. 65s and I didn't really like them. But this one's very vintage voice and it kind of sounds like a big AC15. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I mean, every guitar I play through this thing, I just get super stoked on. Yeah. Here's so. a question: um, Like when you guys are playing like indie or like cl um, classic rock or um, country, like do you change like the, the tone on your amps a lot or do you just keep the same? It, that you can do that all from playing style. And pedals, like the, uh, like we'll do, and some of the new songs we have, like, um, anybody listen to a band called The XX? Um, it's just very kind of like verbed out, but like real picked. Consider that pretty indie tone, you know. Yeah. It's like Like, most of, like, covering... 
differing genres has less to do with your gear. I mean, even, um, frick, like, uh, I'm like out of blank. You know, you can do kind of a Jack White, right? And the Jack White doesn't even use these pedals, but that's I mean that's not as awesome as Jack White. He's crazy cool. He is pretty cool, but. I mean, a lot of the like covering different genres has less to do with your gear and more to do with your fingers. Like, mm -hmm. if you were me playing those different genres right there, like all I'm doing, I'm changing a couple pedals, granted, but I'm changing the way I'm playing. You know, for indie rock, I'm smooth, right? For rock or something, I'm digging in. I'm, I'm playing harder. It's it's more about these than it is this. And when you find gear that complements what all you can do with your hands, like your set, you know, a um, few pedals to make things easier happen. But I mean, this would be considered about the most worship setup you can get aside from the fuss face. And <laughs> I just played indie rock, classic rock, white stripes. And if I turn knobs up enough, I could do a really bad kill switch engage impersonation. <laughs> so, are you guys in here more like rhythm guitar players, like in your worship team, as opposed to like leaders? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for like more of you guys that do more like rhythm stuff, I would encourage you, with going back to the whole finger thing, to like dig in because like there's so yeah. many. Mm. I just see that a lot with rhythm guys. They'll be up there, you know, playing. You know, it's like, man, dig in, you know. That's where, again, it comes back to the fingers. Yeah. It brings out, you can just be so much more, like, dynamic. And that's some, um, because I do a lot of rhythm, you'll, you'll see that when I play. Like, I just always try to bring a lot of that energy. Because it really, it goes a long way. It, it'll, it'll you can hear your difference. tone tighten up. Yeah, your tone will actually like, come out a lot more, too. You've got a bunch of drive on. sessions with um, a bunch of different people probably the number one thing I have to tell them and granted a lot of them are nervous and I get super nervous when I have to play sometimes um, but like if you can get to a <laughs> come back come back I didn't mean it I'm sorry uh, it's like, I'm out of here he's gone I can't didn't like my tone uh, no it's, it's like Confidence is not an arrogant thing, but yeah. when you practice and you put in the time, totally. um, things like digging in comes from comes from your confidence, and that's why I encourage everybody to practice. Because if you can play confidently, you might not even be able to play all that many things. But if you can play chords confidently, I guarantee you you're going to get picked over the dude who can maybe shred a couple things, but doesn't just kind of stand them. there. Uh, it's it's funny attitude and rocking out has so much to do with your tone. It's yeah. funny, like it's something that Bobby and I haven't told Bobby this, but I'm gonna brag on you for a minute. He's totally inspired me as a player in coming here because one thing I love about him and his tone is when he's on stage, he freaking rocks out and goes crazy, and I can see what that does to his tone. And it's funny if you go back back and you watch streaming before he was here, I would just kind of. Like, I was digging in, but I feel like my tone has actually gotten better since he showed up. Because he just kind of inspired me as a player to, like, really dig in, rock out a little bit. And it's funny, like, my tone got a lot better just from, like, moving around on stage. You're, like, I don't know, standing weird or spinning around and, like, rocking out with Graham on the kit for a little bit. Like, getting into the music and feeling it and, like, being stoked and not really caring if something looks flashy, like obviously don't do anything. I'm not about to jump off the drum riser unless we're a really awesome Holy Spirit <laughs> moment, right? But like having fun with it and 
and that like it's it's a huge deal for tone. Um, it's it's that's been the biggest lesson I've learned in like the past couple weeks even of playing. Just like getting into the music and being stoked about what you're playing it makes your tone better because you actually want to play it. Yeah. You're back. Yeah, my youth with the electric guitars. Oh, coming, cool. So. I thought you maybe hated my tone or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We were joking. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. But yeah, that's good. And even on that too, like I think, I think there's a fine line between like when it comes to like the rocking out and moving around because I I do love to do that. But there's you know it's like a heart thing. Like if you're up yeah. there just doing it because you just want to like look ba in front of people. Don't do it because you want to impress. Yeah, like it's. Or... That'll that'll show, you know. People people can see that, you know. But if you're up there, you know, it's basically the same as you know dancing before the Lord. Except you've got a guitar on, yeah. You know, and it, there's a really cool thing about that too. I think it kind of, I think it even releases kind of a freedom in people in your congregation too. If they see that you're up there just man having a ball, having fun, you know, rocking out, mm -hmm. then it like kind of frees them up. Like, oh man, I don't have to just stand here, which is super uncomfortable too when you're leading worship. And you feel like, come on, guys, and everyone's just standing there watching you. Which the cool thing about Bethel is people are so engaged here, and I love that. Um, but yeah, it releases a definitely like a freedom. So yeah. push yourself to do that because yeah, totally, it can also be super helpful. It has and benefits. It has benefits. It's yeah. Proven that to me. It's been rocking out. Yeah. Has it ever been like a desire of any of y'all's to build anything, like pedal wise, or like? I have too many friends that are a lot smarter than me yeah. at that stuff. That's really good at that. Exactly. Yeah, so I have friends yeah. that have built me stuff, and I'm like, wow, I could never do that that good. I'm just going to leave that to you. I'm questioning yeah. Aaron right now. I know, yeah. Where's Aaron right what now? What can you build yeah. me tonight? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I like to I like to build on guitars, kind of. Um, Pam's calling me. I'm probably supposed to be at band session soon. Um, like this guitar. Um, again, another good thing about Tom. Quickly, I'll say I think an amp is the most important. Then I think next is fingers first. Duh. But gear-wise, amp is most important. Then find a guitar that feels right to you, sounds right to you, and then all this other nonsense that sucks anyway. Um, this guitar I searched for a lot of years for a tally, and I finally settled on this one, and it says "Made in Mexico" on the back. Isn't that crazy? Um, I think it says "Old Faithful." Yeah, it says "Old Faithful" too, because this guitar has been very faithful. Um, and this is like I've got some nice guitars I have a Duesenberg that was given to me um, given? Brian Brian gave me that Duesenberg um, <laughs> so that's a very special guitar um, I mean I've got an acoustic that was a, a gift from my parents when I was 16 but um, this is the guitar that I like if it was gone I would really grieve over um, I had like four grand saved for Telly and I played everything and couldn't find anything. And finally, this one felt right. And um, I literally just made it my own. Changed the pickups, changed the all the innards and the guts, put brass knobs on it because they age and they look dirty and nasty and old and cool. And the saddles because compensated saddles stay in tune better. And brass is vintage and sounds darker and it's cooler. And um, like a week before school, I took the finish off the back of the neck. I sat in my room on the floor with a razor blade and just like hacked it off and then I took steel wool over it and put some lemon oil on it and you can see I sweat a ton on stage so it's like going dark and awesome already <laughs> and and this is the other thing I don't like buying relic guitars um I can sit down and I can tell you this little mark on the back here is when I was on tour in the UK and um, I played with Martin Smith for the first time and that was totally life-changing and this is where my little brother nicked his guitar into it and this is where my ex-girlfriend was wearing it like a purse and dropped it on the pavement. And um, this is when Dan McKenzie threw his keys at me. And, it's like, <laughs> and all that sounds kind of dumb and nostalgic and whatever. It's just a hunk of wood. But like I said kind of earlier, like it's an extension of you. And um, if you can find an instrument that you bond with and play with, I think... Um, I think it inspires you to play more and inspires you to play better. Like, I want to play this guitar. Every time I see it, I'm like, frick, I want to play that guitar right now. Um, so keep that in mind, too, you know, before you maybe go buy a guitar or something. You know, it doesn't have to be some crazy expensive, awesome, custom-made, whatever guitar. You know, you make it what it is.
yourself. And you know, yeah. Was that the day she became a Ashtoka? <laughs> no, that was not. <laughs>